Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to evaluate an infinite radical. We have the square root and lots of square roots, infinitely many, by the way, those three dots, which is called ellipsis, means that this goes on forever without stopping. And there's no end, basically. So this is an infinite radical. And we're trying to evaluate the square root of i, multiply by the square root of i squared, multiply by the square root of i cubed, multiply by the square root of i to the fourth power, so on and so forth. Okay? So how do we evaluate something like this if it's infinite, right? Well, there are ways to approach it, but obviously the million dollar question is, does this converge? And I would say yes, but I'm not going to go into the proof of the nitty gritty of why this converges. I'm going to leave it to more rigorous people. Hopefully someone in the comment section down below can talk about convergence and enlighten us. Great. So we have the following product and what do we do about it? With radicals like these, like infinite radicals, suppose you had the square root of i times the square root of i times the square root of i, we usually set this equal to something like z, and then we square both sides. I mean, you don't have to, but kind of makes it a little easier, I think, to see. And we get z squared. Of course, if you square z, you're going to get z squared. And then we just realize, pretend to be surprised, uh-oh, we got our original expression one more time. Haha, <laughs> surprise. So if the original expression was z, this is the exact same thing. I mean, infinitely many times, infinitely many times. You take away one, it's not going to matter. You peel off one layer, you still have infinitely many radicals. That's the beautiful thing about infinity. I don't know if it's good or bad, but you peel off a layer, you still have infinity, and it never changes. I don't know if you heard the story about the infinite hotel or a hotel with infinitely many rooms. You know, when new guests come, how do you make room? Anyways, that's an interesting discussion or joke, whatever you want to call that. But let's get back to our problem. So since this is the exact same thing, we can safely call that Z. So now we have a very simple equation. So this is the beautiful thing about substitution or whatever you call it, right? You, you get something like infinite and then all of a sudden it turns into something finite. Of course, you always need to be concerned about convergence. Does this work? Because certain things don't work, you know the expression about one plus one half plus one third, does it, does it go like this? And then somebody finds negative one twelfth. I think it was Ramanujan, and that was completely incorrect. That was wrong. I'm sorry if you're a big fan, but I'm a fan of Ramanujan too. He did amazing things, but you know, they don't always get it right. Or maybe it was a joke. Don't take it seriously, but that's a different discussion. So getting back here, see how infinity changed into finite. Okay, infinity finity, finiteness. Anyways, <laughs> you get the idea. So since we're trying to solve for z, there are two options here. Either z is zero or after multiplication, I mean, dividing by z, we get z equals i. So if z is zero, then we were saying that this whole thing is zero, but that's not true because we know that i squared is negative one, the square root of i is one half plus something, something, you know, or the square root of one half something. But this can't be zero, obviously, right? It's imaginary, complex, whatever, but it's not zero. We know that. So this is not possible. Then the only option left is e equals i. You get the idea? We can do it, but with our original expression, we're not able to do that. Why? Because something weird about this, the powers of i are increasing gradually. There's a pattern, but how do you handle something like this? You can't set it equal to z, because when you do z squared, you're not going to get z, nor are you going to get something that looks like z or something that can be likened to z. But can we not get away with something like this, maybe? We can try, at least, right? Set this equal to z, and let me know if you can find a way to make this work. And then when you square both sides, obviously, right, you're going to get something like this. And this will become z squared. Do you find z in here? Maybe. Remember, the z started with the square root of i. So maybe we can possibly take one of these i's and put inside. But if you put it inside, it's going to go in as i squared, which is going to multiply this one. It's going to give us i to the fifth. You can still pull another 
you know, I cube from here and pu push it inside, keep doing it, but I don't think you're gonna find something meaningful. This is gonna be super duper messy and super duper confusing. So I don't think it's gonna work, but correct me if I'm wrong. So we do need a separately, like entirely different approach for this problem. And let me go ahead and explain what I mean by that, because I think this is just awesome. And I'm pretty sure somebody will find another way to approach it. And I remember doing a similar problem, like something like this, but what not, not with I maybe with some real numbers. Great. So, by the way, if you replace i squared with negative one, would that help? Possibly not. Oh, I just remembered. We can actually come up with a pattern here like this. This is gonna be negative one, this is gonna be negative i, and then the next one is gonna be one, and then we're gonna have the i again. Uh-oh, this looks like it's gonna work because I can also approach it this way. Look, yeah, I just thought of this, by the way, on the spot, I didn't really think about it before, but i to the fourth is one, and I can leave it like that, or just write one, and i to the fifth is gonna be i, and then we're gonna have the same pattern. Repetition, right? Repetition is good in math, because that just means you got a pattern. So let's go ahead and make this whole thing equal to z. Nice. Now, this is gonna give us the following. Since our thing starts repeating here, this actually is the same as Z. Beautiful. So that's Z, are you convinced? I hope you do, you are. So it's gonna be like the square root of I times I squared, and then I cubed, and then I to the fourth, which is one, so we can safely say this is Z right here inside the radical. And of course, that whole thing is equal to Z as well. Uh-oh, this is nice because we can square both sides and square both sides and square both sides and square both sides, keep doing it until we get to a hopefully meaningful point. Let's go ahead and do that. Square once, you're gonna get this, right? That'll be z squared. Square one more time, you'll get i squared, and then this layer is gonna peel off, right? And we'll get z to the fourth. Of course, that's negative one. If you wanna write it a negative one, this is also a negative one. And when they're multiplied, I think they're, they're gonna be positive one. So we're, gonna, we're left with this, and square that again, you're gonna get i cubed multiplied by square root of z is z to the eighth power. I hope this works. Uh, if you wanna square one more time, that's fine. i to the six times z is z to the power 16. And finally, ta-da-da-da, I hope this works. z to the power 15 is i to the six, but i to the six is i squared, because i to the fourth is one, and that is negative one. Uh-oh, I don't think we have a solution. But anyways, from here, z can be negative one or one of the 15th roots of negative one. Obviously, there are 15 roots, one of which is negative one, so on and so forth. Do you think one of these is work is gonna work? I don't know. Let's go ahead and try the second method. The first method, I don't know if, it doesn't look very promising to me. So anyways, it was something I came on the spot anyway, so no big deal. Let me know if that, you can make it work. Okay. Now this is my original expression, and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the i and consider the radicals around it. For example, this i is square rooted once, so it's i to the power one half. This i squared is square rooted twice, so it's gonna be to the power one fourth. And then the next one is i to the third, and it's square rooted three times, that's one eighth. And then we have i to the fourth to the power one over 16. So the more radicals, the deeper it gets and the more uh, fractions you have. Make sense, sort of, okay. So this is kind of like an infinite product turned from a radical to an exponential. And now we can write with rational exponents, i to the power one half, i to the power two fourths, by the way, don't simplify that, i to the power three eighths and i to the power four over 16, so on and so forth. Now here's what it turns into. We can add the exponents, and this is where the magic or mathematics begins. We're gonna be concerned with the exponent, of course, right? How do you evaluate that? Let's go ahead and focus on that, and you can go back and make it a power of i, hopefully if I don't forget. So what kind of expression are we dealing with? So here's what I'm gonna define. I'm gonna write this as one half plus two times one half squared, plus three times one half to the third, and remember, 
uh, where those powers come from, and then one half to the fourth power from the radical, right? So if we call this number x, we get something like this. x plus 2x squared plus 3x cubed plus 4x to the fourth power dot dot dot. So on and so forth. If you can evaluate this, we can always go back and do the whole thing. Now factor out an x. I think it'll be better if you do. And then you can kind of like look at it one more time. And do you realize that 3 squared is the derivative of x cubed, 2x is the derivative of x squared. In other words, if you kind of write an expression like this and call that s, s prime is just going to be 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed, so on and so forth. So this is going to be exactly s prime. But the million dollar question again is, what is S, right? Well, we have an answer. That's an infinite geometric series. Of course, if uh, X is between zero and one or negative one and one, in this case, you know, it's a little different, but it's one over one minus X. If you differentiate it, you get one over one minus X squared. The negative from the negative X and the power kind of cancel each other out. You get that. Isn't that cool? Now, we can go ahead and plug it in, and this becomes x over 1 minus x quantity squared, which brings us over here, because if x is 1 half, then this becomes 1 half divided by 1 half squared. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 half goes to 1 fourth two times, right? So that will be a 2. Wow. That is our power, remember? It was i to the power something which happens to be a 2, so the answer is i squared, which happens to be negative 1. Well, my first method was actually correct, because it gave me negative 1 as the answer, right? Exactly. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath, my other channel. If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems. And also don't forget to check out A plus BI and bye-bye.